Good morning, everyone. Good morning. This is Cynthia Guazda, Community Services Librarian at Hageman Library here in East Haven, here to share with you some of our new uh, book acquisitions um, that are available at the library for you to borrow. So without further ado, I'm going to share those. We'll talk about those. Oops, let's see. Sorry about that, everyone. Okay, so we're gonna talk about some new fiction. So new and featured adult fiction for July, 2022. Um, these are our books that you can uh, borrow at the library. So you can call the library at 203-468-3890 and ask for the books. You can also visit our website at www.hagemanlibrary.org. Um, and you can click on catalog and uh, and search your um, your account, um, log in, and also you can uh, put reserves on the books from there. So without further ado, we will um, we'll talk about some books that we have um, this July. So the first book that I'd like to talk to you about is called The End, End of the World House, and it's by Adrian Selt. Birdie and Kate have been best friends since high school. Birdie is, is a semi-failed cartoonist working for a prominent Silicon Valley tech firm. Her job depresses her, but not as much as the fact that Kate has recently decided to move from San Francisco to Los Angeles. When Betty's attempts to make Kate stay, stay to make Kate stay fail. When Birdie's attempt to make Kate stay fail. Uh, stay fails, she suggests the next best thing, a trip to Paris that will hopefully distract the duo from their upcoming separation. The vacation is it's also a sort of last hurrah, coming during a ceasefire in a series of escalating world conflicts, when a mysterious stranger offers them a private tour of the Louvre. The women find themselves alone in the museum, where nothing is quite as it seems. Caught up in a day that keeps repeating itself, the two are eventually separated, and Birdie is faced with a mystery that threatens to derail everything. A heartfelt ode to friendship and self-discovery, The End of the World House, is a charming and thought-provoking novel exploring relationships, art, and the choices which make all the difference. That's End of the World House by Adrian Selt. Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. Chemist Elizabeth Zott is not your average woman. In fact, Elizabeth Zott would be the first to point out that there is no such thing as an average woman. But it's the early 1960s and her all-male team at Hastings Research Institute takes a very unscientific view of equality, except for one, Calvin Evans, the lonely, brilliant, Nobel Prize-nominated grudge holder who falls in love with, of all things, her mind, true chemistry results. But like science, life's unpredictable, which is why a few years later, Elizabeth Zott finds herself not only a single mother, but the reluctant star of America's most beloved cooking show, Supper at Six. Elizabeth's unusual approach to cooking, combine one tablespoon acidic acid with a pinch of sodium chloride, proves revolutionary, but as her following grows, not everyone's happy, because as it turns out, Elizabeth Zott isn't just teaching women to cook. She's daring them to change the status quo. Laugh out loud, funny, shrewdly observant, and studded with a dazzling cast of supporting characters, Lessons in Chemistry is as original and vibrant as, as its protagonist. That's Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. Book Lovers by Emily Henry. Nora Stevens' life is books. She's read, read them all, and she's not the, that type of heroine. Not the plucky one, not the laid-back dream girl, and especially not the sweetheart. In fact, the only people Nora is a heroine for are her clients, for whom she lands enormous deals as a cutthroat literary agent and her beloved little sister Libby which is why she agrees to go to Sunshine Falls, North, North Carolina for the month of August when Libby begs her for a sister's trip away with visions of a small town transformation for Nora, who she's convinced needs to become the heroine in her own story. 
but instead of picnics in meadows or run-ins with a handsome country doctor or bulging four-armed bartender, Nora, Nora keeps bumping into Charlie Lastra, a bookish brooding editor from back in the city. It would be a, it would be a meet cute if not for the fact that they've met many times and it's never been cute. If Nora knows she's not an ideal heroine, Charlie knows he's nobody's hero. But as they are thrown together again and again in a series of coincidences no ed editor worth their salt would allow, what they discover might just unravel the carefully crafted stories they've written about themselves. That's Book Lovers by Emily Henry. Cult Classic by Sloan Crosley. One night in New York City's Chinatown, a woman is at work is at a work reunion dinner with former colleagues when she excuses herself to buy a quick pack of cigarettes. On her way back, she returns and she run on her way back, she runs into a former boyfriend and then another and another. Soon nothing's quite what it seems as the city becomes awash with ghosts of heartbreaks past. What would normally pass for coincidence becomes something far stranger as our heroine, the recently engaged Lola, must contend not only with the viability of her current relationship, but the fact that both her best friend and her former boss, a magazine editor turned mystical guru, might have an unhealthy investment in the outcome. Memories of the past swirl and converge in ways both comic and eerie as Lola is forced to decide if she will surrender herself to the conspire to the conspiring of one very contemporary cult. Is it possible to have a happy ending in an age when the past is ever at your fingertips and sanity is for sale? With her gimlet eye, Sloan Crowsley spins a wry literary fantasy that is equal parts page turner and poignant portrayal of alienation. That's cult classic by Sloan Crowsley. Counterfeit by Kirsten Chen. Ava Wong has always played it safe as a straight-laced, rule-abiding Chinese-American lawyer with a successful surgeon as a husband, a young son, and a beautiful home. She's built the perfect life, but beneath this facade, Ava's world is crumbling. Her marriage is falling apart, her expensive law degree hasn't been used in years, and her toddler's tantrums are pushing her to the breaking point. Enter Winnie Fang, Ava's enigmatic co college roommate, from mainland China who abruptly dropped out under mysterious circumstances. Now, 20 years later, Winnie is looking to reconnect with her old friend, but the shy, awkward girl Ava once knew has been replaced with a confident woman of the world, dripping in luxury goods, including a coveted Birkin, a coveted, coveted Birkin in a classic orange, the secret of her success. Winnie has developed an ingenious counterfeit scheme that involves important near exact replicas of luxury handbags. And now she needs someone with a US passport to help manage her business. Someone who'd never be suspected of wrongdoing. Someone like Ava. But when their spectacular success is threatened and Winnie vanishes once again, Ava's left to face the consequences. Swift, surprising and sharply comic, Counterfeit is a stylish and feminist caper with a strong point of view and an axe to grind, peering behind the curtain of the upscale designer storefronts and the Chinese factories where luxury goods are produced. Kirsten Chen interrogates, interrogates the myth of the model minority through two unforgettable women determined to demand more from life. That's Counterfeit by Kirsten Chen. A Brilliant Night of Stars and Ice by Rebecca. Rebecca Connolly. Shortly after midnight on April 15, 1912, the captain of the Carpathia, Arthur Rostron, wakes to a distress signal from the Titanic, which has struck an iceberg on its maiden voyage. Though information is scarce, Rostron leaps into action, determined to answer the call for help. But the Carpathia is more than four hours away, and there are more questions than answers. Will the ship hold together if pushed to never before tested speeds? What if he also strikes an iceberg? And with the freezing temperatures, will there be any survivors by the time the Carpathia arrives? Kate Connolly is a third class passenger on Titanic and she's among the last to receive instruction and help after it hits an iceberg. Despite the chaos of abandoning ship, Kate is able to board a lifeboat. Though after seeing the Titanic sink into the abyss, 
and hearing the cries from hundreds of people still in the water, she wonders if any rescue is even possible. Told in alternating chapters from both Captain Rostron and Kate Connolly, this novel is a compelling, heart-pounding account of two eyewitnesses to an epic disaster. Rostron's heroic and compassionate leadership, his methodical preparations for rescue, and his grit and determination to act honorably and selflessly to save lives and care for the survivors sets the course for this awe-inspiring story. A Brilliant Night of Stars and Ice by Rebecca Connolly. Kei Ke Kei And that's by Vanish Navi Patel. I was born on the full moon under an auspicious constellation, the holiest of positions, much good it did me. So begins Kayakai's story, the only daughter of the kingdom of of Kekaya, she is raised on tales of the gods. How they turn the vast ocean to obtain the nectar of immortality, how they vanquish evil and ensure the land of, of Barat to, to ensure the land of Barat prospers, and how they offer powerful boons to the devout and the wise. Yet she watches as her father unceremoniously banishes her mother, listens as her own worth is reduced to how great a marriage alliance she can secure. And when she calls upon the gods for help, they never seem to hear. Desperate for some measure of independence, she turns to the text she once read with her mother and discovers a magic that is hers alone. With this power, Kaikai transforms herself from an overlooked princess into a warrior, diplomat, and most favored queen, determined to carve a better world for herself and the women around her. But as the evil from her childhood story threatens the co cosmic order, the path she's forged clashes with the destiny the gods have chosen for her family. And Kayakei Kai must decide if resistance is worth the destruction it will, wreck, it will wreak and what legacy she intends to leave behind. That's Kayakei by Va Vaishnavi Patel. A teeny Upward Shove by Melissa Sh Chadburn. Marina Sales Life does not end the day she wakes up dead. Instead, in the course of a moment, she's transformed into the stuff of myth, the stuff of her grandmother's old Filipino stories, an, an A swang, a creature of mystery and vengeance. She spent her time on earth on the margins, shot like a pinball through a childhood of loss. She was a veteran of child protective services and a survivor, but always reacting, watching from a distance, understanding very little of her own life, let alone the lives of others. Death brings her into the hearts and minds of those she has known, even her killer, as she accesses their memories and sees anew the meaning of her own. In her nine days as an A-swang, while she considers whether to exact vengeance on her killer, she also traces back, finally able to see what led these two lost souls to a crushingly inevitable conclusion. In A Teeny Upward Shove, the debut novelist Melissa Chadburn charts the heartbreaking journeys of two, two of society's castoffs as they make their way to each other and their roles as criminal and victim. What does it mean to be on the brink? When are those moments that change not only our lives, but our very selves? And how in this impossible world full of cruelty and negligence can we rouse ourselves towards mercy? A, a teeny upward shove by Melissa Chadburn. And that ends our, our book talk for this morning. Uh, thank you for watching. Follow us online for more recommendations and library content. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter um, at Hageman Library and on Instagram at Hageman underscore East Haven. So thank you very much for watching. And I look forward to talking with you next month about our new um, adult fiction for August. I hope you have a great day. And it was great speaking with you this morning.